So you're thinking about planning a trip to Walt Disney World in 2022? Everything you need to know coming up next. What's up guys, it is 2022 and there are a lot of changes with the Walt Disney World Resort vacation planning and of course they will continue to change as we move forward. Everything from theme park construction to certain restaurants not being open to a whole new fast pass system, lots of changes and lots of different things you need to know for 2022. Nonetheless, Walt Disney World still can provide that Disney bubble feel and it can still be a great vacation for you and your family. So let's go over all you need to know when planning a trip in 2022. So if you're in the early stages of planning this trip, you're definitely gonna to wanna to look at different pricing for the particular time of year. The more popular times are definitely gonna have higher prices all across the board. That includes flights, hotels, even theme park ticket reservations. So you definitely wanna get a feel for when you can go. And if possible, if you're flexible, you definitely wanna go in off peak uh, times. The best thing you can do is kind of check peak crowd calendars and figure out when's the most popular times and when's the least popular times. But generally, if you check the hotel reservations and flights, the prices will tell you. In terms of COVID information, vaccines are not required. Um, you do need to wear face masks at this point in time indoors or indoor attractions. Another thing you're gonna wanna do is download the My Disney Experience app if you have not already done so. You can go on and sign up and log in. You definitely need an account. So you definitely wanna make sure all your information is streamlined into one spot, either on your app, or you can use a website browser and check out the My Disney Experience that way. So Disney World is still on a theme park reservation system, and that's probably gonna occur all the way through 2022 into 2023. So what that means is each park has a certain limit for theme park reservations. And as people cancel, uh, more might open up, but there are some days, especially in the summer and peak times in spring break, that some of these theme parks might not be available. So if you're planning your trip, definitely check out what parks are available for the times you're considering going. So how do you book a theme park reservation? You have to purchase tickets. Once you purchase tickets, you can go and book the actual reservation for the availability. You don't need to purchase tickets just to check the availability. So if you're just fishing around, you can check the availability without purchasing tickets. But if you actually make a theme park reservation, you need to book tickets in advance. All right, next is dining. Now Disney dining used to be able to be booked up to 180 days out. Now it is just 60 days, which I personally like. So within the 60 day time frame, you're definitely gonna wanna check out potential restaurants that you and your family are considering booking, especially if it's a party over four. So you go on the My Disney Experience app or the website and check what restaurants are available and try to lock some of the good restaurants down so that way you at least have options. You can always cancel up to 24 hours free of any kind of penalty. If it's within 24 hours, you definitely wanna call Disney just to make sure you're not gonna be charged because they can charge you if you do not show up for your reservation. So in terms of dining, you definitely wanna check what's available and what's closed. Like for example, Epcot just opened a brand new space restaurant, Space 2020. On the other side, Grand Floridian currently has 1900 Park Fair closed and Victorian Albert. So you just wanna check out what is open and what is closed currently and figure out what type of food you like, check the menus, and then figure out a game plan of your parks. So the tricky thing with dining is planning that far out. So when it comes to planning dining, you might wanna plan your dining with your theme park reservations. So figure out what's the priority, the theme park dates or your dining. If dining is your priority and it's inside a particular theme park, well then you're gonna to have to align your theme park reservations with that particular dining. So I would recommend making sure that your dining and your theme park reservations are booked at the same time. All right, so one of the biggest changes to Walt Disney World in 2022 is they got rid of the FastPass Plus system and they have installed this new sort of controversial Genie Plus FastPass system. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I'm gonna go over the basic details that you need to know for planning a trip in 2022. 
All right, so Genie Plus is an additional cost. You are not required to buy Genie Plus, but this is the only way you'll have access to any kind of fast pass currently. So Genie Plus is actually $15 plus tax for each individual guest for the day that you want. Um, you have to have a park reservation to be able to access Genie Plus. So with Disney Genie Plus, you actually pick available times and you can do one at a time. As soon as you redeem um, the previous Genie Plus ride, you can access another one. Here's the catch. Not every single ride is available on Disney Genie Plus, and this is one of the annoying things. So there's actually something called Individual Lightning Lane or Individual Genie Plus, which is basically where you have to buy the high demand rides a la carte. So like Flight of the Avatar, um, Snow White Mine Train, those popular rides are actually an additional cost. You don't need the Disney Genie Plus to get those, you can just have a regular park pass and you could pay to go on those particular rides. But it could be upwards as $15 per ride per person. So check that out and determine what rides are absolutely going to be the must do's. And if they are a long line, you might wanna consider that, but it is an additional charge to go on these rides potentially without waiting in these huge lines. So here's a list of all the Genie Plus available rides and the individual Lightning Lane rides. In addition, the Disney Genie Plus can be used for park hopping, so you can go from one park to another and it still applies. That's one good thing. Another thing that I'm not too happy with with Disney World is they got rid of the Magical Express, which was a complimentary transportation service from the airport to your Disney Resort. And what was cool is they would take your baggage and basically it would magically appear in your hotel room. So that service is gone. You have to find your own way from the airport to the Disney Resorts. Now, Mirrors was the company that worked with Disney in the Magical Express, but now you have to pay for it. So basically it's 16 bucks a person for adults, one-way transportation from the airport to the Disney World Resort, $13.50 a child. In addition, you can always use Uber or Lyft, taxis, things like that to get to your destination. So after you've determined your theme park reservations, dining, etc., you're now gonna wanna think about your Disney World Resort. You're gonna to wanna to weigh the pros and cons of staying off property and on property. So staying off property, obviously, you can get probably better value. You can stay at some you know, more name brand hotels like JW Marriott for pretty cheap, but you're gonna to have to factor in transportation um, and the fact that you're off the Disney bubble. But you can find some great hotels out there in Orlando. We love the Gaylord Palms Resort and Convention Center, but there's plenty out there in Orlando. If you want to stay in the Disney bubble, there are lots of great options. The way they do it is they broke it up into three groups. So at the highest, you have your deluxe level resorts, which are going to be your most expensive, and they really have good amenities, good theming, nice pools, things like that, or location. The moderates are still very good. You might not have as good of amenities inside the room, um, but they're still very good and very well themed. You also have your uh, value resorts, which are good themed, but the rooms are maybe not as nice as the deluxe, etc. And there might not be, you know, full amenities. The bus services might not be as good as the deluxe kind of service. You know, you kind of get what you pay for with that. So some examples of deluxe hotels. You have the Grand Floridian, the Contemporary, the Polynesian, all located in the monorail loop that connects to the Magic Kingdom. Then you have Fort Wilderness Lodge, just off to the side, you can take a boat to the Magic Kingdom. In the Boardwalk Epcot area, you have uh, the Beach and Yacht Club, which are deluxe. You have the Boardwalk, which is another deluxe resort. You also have the Disney World Swan and Dolphin. Now, they're not technically Disney World you know, affiliated resorts. They're owned and operated by Marriott, but they're very good resorts and good options that are right in the Boardwalk Epcot Hollywood Studios area. So in terms of some moderate level resorts, you have the Port Orleans Riverside and French Quarter. You have the Coronado, Caribbean Beach, Art of Animation. So within the Caribbean Beach and the Coronado, you do have deluxe towers that have been recently built on those properties. And those would be deluxe level options if they're available. 
Another couple moderates to note, you have Saratoga Springs and you have Key West. Some value resorts would be your all-star hotels, the movies, music, and sports, and then like Pop Century. So those would be some examples of some values. So obviously there's lots of different options when staying both on property and off property. So you have to figure out finances and what makes most sense for you. So here's a list of any of the refurbishments or closures within the hotels. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is the theme parks. What's going on with the theme parks in 2022? What you can expect in terms of what's open, what's closed. All right, so here's a list of all the theme park closures and refurbishments that you wanna pay attention to in 2022 when considering your trip. So starting with Epcot, which has a lot of construction. Now Epcot will be fully completed in sometime in 2023 if all goes well and it will be awesome. Right now, there's a lot of temporary walking paths and a lot of construction going on. In terms of closures, however, all the rides are operational. The Epcot Forever Fireworks were replaced by a new harmonious show in the Epcot Lagoon. So you can do a little bit more research as to whether Epcot is worth it for you and your family while it's under construction. In terms of Animal Kingdom, Animal Kingdom has a couple refurbishments going on. So Expedition Everest is actually closed for refurbishment until mid-April 2022. Finding Nemo the Musical will return in spring 2022. And there is some construction in the dino land of Animal Kingdom. All right, in terms of the Magic Kingdom, Enchanted Tales with Belle is closed. The Festival of Fantasy Parade will return in early 2022. The Walt Disney World Railroad will be opening at some point in early 2022 as well. Currently, they're working on it and testing it. In terms of Hollywood Studios, Fantasmic is going to return in 2022 as well. Most likely late spring or early summer. The Voyage of the Little Mermaid is currently closed, and it is unknown when that will reopen. Some of the Star Wars Launch Bay and Galactic Spectacular will be closed until further notice as well. So all in all, Walt Disney World can still be a great vacation destination for 2022. It is winter right now, 2022. It's time to start planning for that awesome vacation that you guys have been saving for and are ready to take. So I hope this video was informative. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. Enjoy your trip.